My name is Christina Carter, and today on thesocialpet.net, we are going to talk about how to groom feet and trim toenails on our canine companions. So we have our nail clippers, our little small slicker brush, our greyhound comb, the Dremel, our or rotary tool, and our scissors and thinning shears. Hi, Rian. Now we're going to try and get Pirate on the table. He may or may not jump up here by himself. And I am using treats to try and encourage him to get up there. I don't think it's going to happen. Smaller dogs is a whole lot easier. Give him up and there he goes. We're going to put Pirate in the noose. I've adjusted the grooming arm. And you notice that Pirate is able to move without choking himself. He's able to stand with his head up. Not cranks fast, but his head is up, so that you have a dog that you're trying to trim feet or toenails on, and they don't like it, if they'll bite, or if they just keep yanking, or if you're afraid that they could bite, then that's another good reason to have this new tight, but not choking them. That doesn't always work with smaller dogs. There's very little room between your hands and their face when you're doing their feet. So when you flip their feet over to check for um, hair, when you go to trim their, the hair in between their pads and things, the pirate is very tolerant, by the way. Poor guy, I'm pulling on, it tickles. <laughs> so if you see him jump, it tickles, not hurt. His pad, you can see, is two different colors. He's got the pink, it's a little dirty right now, slightly brownish and the black, and that is not an issue. That's just because he's black and white, so part of his pad is black. He's got a couple of spots here. Those are not a problem. You wanna check for any sores, any spots maybe where he got burnt or stepped on a thorn, and that's also what you can check for down between these toes as you go. And you'll be able to see more once you cut some of this hair away. And with the toenails, you can see he's got a hook, so it's thicker inside, and then it hooks toward the end. What's inside there is called a quick, that's your blood supply to your toenail to help keep it healthy and growing. And if you cut into that, it's painful. It's kind of tearing your fingernail below the line is what that feels like. But what you want to take off is you want to take off the hook, the extra empty toenail that he has grown. And that's what digs into your floors and, and makes the gouges. And first tool I'm going to use are my scissors or shears. And one of the things you want to think about are maybe trying to pull up this hair in between their pads so it sticks up so you're not having to try and really dig in there. When you cut hair on their feet, you want to stay level with their pads. Do not try and watch where the tips of your scissors are going. You don't want to be cutting their feet. So just stay level with their pad. Go around and you can pull hair as you go. And again, this tickles, <laughs> so expect them to jump a little bit. And don't be afraid to cut the hair. It grows back. I have treats in my pocket. These are another very handy weapon, if you will, for a dog that's either insecure or just unsure, or maybe they hurt somewhere and you just don't know and that's why they're starting to fidget. But treating them every once in a while is <laughs> just a good reinforcement for good behavior. Little dogs can be somewhat more difficult, as you can imagine, for trimming their feet, especially if they don't want it done. For some little dogs, they don't care. Most of them do. Sometimes you need an assistant, and it's okay to call on help. It's not bad training. Some dogs just don't want their feet done. And to protect you and the dog, it's just better to get help. It's important to choose someone who has a calming effect instead of an amplifying the dog's fear effect. If you have an upset dog and an upset assistant, it's just going to make matters worse. The dogs do smell it. Your 
lot of the changes, the pheromones you give off, just lots of things. We don't think about it because we humans, we humans don't talk that way, but dogs do. Dogs read it, they smell it, they can tell your facial expression. Just be aware of who you're choosing as your assistant. Now here's the third foot. Trim. Make it look a little neater. This this hair here that I'm trimming up at the back drags on the well makes contact with the ground. Baby drag. Again in between the pads. And then his top is this here between the foot and the joint. They call it a hog. You comb the hair up and that way when you use your thinning shears and I can show you the difference. Scissors make a straight line and you know that you've been there and you know that you've cut hair off. The thinning shears make it look a little more natural. It doesn't look like you've been at their hair with the scissors. For toenails, you want to look clear nails or white nail dogs. You can look on the side and see where the paint stops and you should not go any closer than that. For black toenail dogs, you want to look actually under, trying to move his hair so you can get a good picture, under their toenail. And you can see where there's a little V kind of coming up in that valley in there. And that's their quick. The quick can be hard to spot. But don't worry if you do cut it. Odds are you will at some point. Don't worry. And it does hurt a little bit. It feels like you ripped your nail, your personal fingernail, down below the line. It's not life-threatening. It is sore. If you get it too far, it can get infected. But just stop the bleeding with either some a bar of soap or some flour. And call your vet if he continues to limp or licks it. It's been a couple days and you're concerned. But my cue for when to trim toenails is when I hear the click, click, clickety click on the hardwood floor going down the hallway. These are my nail trimmers. This is what I use on this size dog or even a little bit bigger, not your giant breed. I trim Jasper's toenails. You can see they're cut straight off. I just used regular toenail, dog toenail trimmers on them. It because he had a bad experience with someone using a Dremel on his toenails and it either got hot or it got quick or he got scared. He was 12 weeks old at the time. Once I'm done trimming nails, I use my Dremel to grind off the rough edges around the, around the sides of the toenail. If you're a first time user or any user, you want to be very careful so you don't grind down into the quick that we've just avoided cutting with the toenail. You can use a na nail file instead, just like you would use on your fingernail. But that's it. And it's rounded instead of straight. That won't take your pores or your legs. Pink Panthers are not real. You're here.